Um, related to academics, um, one question I'd like to throw out, which came up in the first panel as well, um, one of the panelists suggested that student athletes shouldn't be required to be full-time students. Um, and I'll throw out an alternative to that, which is, and because in my kids who went here and were athletes and spent 30, 40 hours a week on their sports, 52 weeks a year, um, and it, there was a tension between that and obviously in the academic side. So the question is, take either position, the first panel said you could not be required to be a full-time student. What about if the workloads, which could be mandated by the NCAA, the practice times and all the other activities associated with the sport, those could be reduced as well. So I'm curious as to what you think about those two alternatives. Oh, I always got something to say. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> um, I, 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 well, I got here halfway through the first session, but it, it doesn't sound bad. Like I say, mm -hmm. I, that was the first time I heard uh, Lawrence kind of break everything down, and uh, like I, I respectfully agree with some of his points. But then, if he spends some time with me, we can I kind of get him to the pay athletes part. Eventually. <laughs> 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 no, but he, he's only speaking from his perspective. You have to respect people and their you know their their perspective. Uh, but it doesn't sound like a bad idea. It's a it's definitely a job for these kids. And as I continue to say, these kids are not in a position based upon their athletic requirements to get an appropriate education. And so you push this coursework on them just to flush them through the system, and it really does nothing. So it's not a bad idea, but I keep on saying I'm, I'm with Lawrence on this part. Like, you come to these discussions and nothing happens. I wish that somehow, some way you can live stream this stuff or record it and, and filter it through to students, the people who it affects and have their opinions. And I would love for these people to just say, hey, I don't want to play no more basketball, football, hockey, golf, nothing. And then you bring these smart people in the room, and then you talk to the NCAA, and then you shut everything down. And once the money's cut off, then you have a real discussion because you'd be like, you know what? Nobody's going to get paid. So I bet you Urban Meyer, Nick Saban, everybody get on their planes, and they'll fly over to Indianapolis, and they'll be like, man, we got to figure this thing out. You know what I'm saying? That's true. That's true. That's the truth. That's the truth. We can start right there with that discussion uh, because your student athlete supports, all this stuff wouldn't even go on if you have a real discussion about it. Everybody stops. And I bet you everybody gets smart at some point, right? But that's not a bad idea, the stand and just. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that athletes should be treated any different than all those kids in the back back there. You know, I mean, yeah, we're here, we're on scholarship, <clears throat> but as far as course load, I mean, even with the issues I was going through and all of the help that is offered at this university, and I can only speak for here because this is the only place I've ever been. You know, I can't imagine that you can't figure out how to make it work. I mean, I realize that you're lifting football players, basketball players, you're doing all that stuff. And I know golf has changed tremendously now. We have that beautiful new facility over at OSU Golf Course, you know, where they can practice and be in it year round. Um, but I don't, I don't think, I think that takes it to a whole nother level where, you know, I spent one year thinking I was God's gift of whatever. Guess what, I'm not. <laughs> And I think that's what that portrays is, is you, you can't treat people differently. I mean, it's got to be equitable for everyone, including the kid that is coming here, paying his own way. But I, I, don't, I don't, do not agree with that piece. Can I, can yeah, I say can I, something? No, but, can, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead go no, ahead. but the, the fact of life, if everybody is not the same. They're not the same. And they're, they're every, the that's same. why you pay Peyton Manning a million dollars a game, and that's why you pay the practice squad player his portion because everybody doesn't have the same value and we understand that everywhere else in society. If I went to her law firm and me and her cooped the same money just because I'm employed, you'd be like, oh, you'd probably say, oh, that's crazy. And I'd be like, no, well, we're equal and we're buddies and we're happy and we work for the same company. You know, but she'd be like, no, Maurice, I have more value to the situation. Right. I litigate more, right. I do everything more because I'm more valuable. So they're not, speaking in my terms, they're not putting practice squad player number 67's jersey in the window. No, they're putting number 13, but we don't put Claret on the back, so it's cool. You know what I'm saying? So everybody becomes dumb. You know, I've, I've never signed anything other than 13 numbers my whole life, right? But the NCAA says so it's not Maurice Claret because it's not his name on the back. You know what I'm saying? So, and I, 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 I get passionate, but I'm respectful to people. I just says 
everybody in life doesn't have the same value to what they're pushing and promoting. So there's nothing wrong with treating people mm -hmm. based upon their contribution to the situation. Mm -hmm. I don't know. No, I, I agree. I mean, as athletes, I mean, particularly, I mean, this whole discussion um, is really about football and men's, and men's basketball. Um, gender equity, yes, is very important. I got a daughter who's a big time swimmer. I know, maybe she'll be at, at Columbus mm -hmm. School for Girls. <laughs> so I, I know, so I, I know. And I grew up in a house full of women. I have three older sisters and a single mom. So I, I get all of that. But we also have to think, we're not, you're not treated differently. When you go or you get into the clubs, you get into this and, and all that, you're treated totally different than a regular student body. So I think the notion of equity and fairness and all this, I, I don't really know how you do it. So I say, look, if you're going to pay players, which I'm against, but if you're going to do it, it has to be a tier system. Now, the number 34 jersey, I, saw, I made a lot of money for this university. They made a lot of money off me, and I wasn't on scholarship. I paid my own way. But, yeah, I know, right? I know, I know right? What were you thinking? Well, I, knew, I, was, I knew I was going to the league, too, Sean. I knew that, right? I knew I was going to the league. But, but it's, it's not, and we want to be fair, particularly in this society today. No, no, it's not, a, it's not fairness. It's not based on, it's, it's really your value proposition. What do you bring to the table? And I think we want to be fair, right? Yeah. But we really can't be with this whole discussion. So I think there are some things that we can do, and we have to separate and look at it because... Other sports, they know, particularly uh, if I'm if I'm if I'm babysitting a keg and I and I and I partied a lot, but if I'm babysitting, if I'm hanging out, if I'm partying, especially now, I gotta be careful if somebody don't take a picture of me and post it on Twitter or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if somebody who's not in a you know revenue generating sport or whatever, they they can a little be a little bit more risk taking, right? So it's not really a, a fairness issue. And I think most in Football and basketball, and most of the time, you're pushed and you're steered to meaningless degrees. I knew from coming in, you're not going to tell me what I'm going to take. I'm going to, I'm going to take, and not only that, though, when somebody says jump, I'm not going to say how high. I'm going to say for what? That, that's me. That's just how I look at things. <laughs> but I made sure that Lawrence Funderburg was going to have some substance and some value beyond a basketball player. And I've always had issue with people. Yeah. If you saw me only as a basketball player, I would treat you like you, you didn't even exist. That's how I was, that was me. I would treat you like the black plague, okay, or like you had leprosy. But if you took me seriously for my intellectual capabilities, let's have a conversation, we can go there. But we don't value young people's, particularly athletes, their intellectual capabilities. We say we, you can do everything from the neck down, but from the neck up, that, that's really not important to us. And until we make it a priority, I think Sean said, as far as parents, alumni, they have to advocate for the kids because that's where the money is, right? Their kid coming to the school and then the, and then alumni giving all this money. But until it becomes an issue of money, like Marie says, and people really know, this whole issue, we're gonna talk about over and over and over again. And if nothing gets done, I don't wanna be a part of it. Don't, don't right. call me, don't invite me, because if my time is too valuable. And we keep going around this mountain, but nothing keeps done, being done. And we wanna say everything's fair. Everything is not fair in life. It doesn't work that way. Whatever you bring to the table, that's what you should get paid. Yeah, but I think it's two different issues, right? There's two different issues. There's an academic issue, whether these guys should go through school and have a certain type of curriculum and getting paid, right? I think we, we, we kind of jumbled a little bit in the second, <laughs> second group. Let, let's separate that. Let, let's make sure it's, that's totally different. I think there, there are some courses that guys from, we started a program, I think it was majority one here at Ohio State. Uh, when I was in school, and and it was junior junior athletes, they were advisors or mentors to freshmen or guys coming in from Detroit, D.C., Chicago, California, wherever these guys were, and we were just trying to mentor those guys. And that was a majority one program. I think there are. I, I wish there was economics for <laughs> for sports when I was in school. I would have took that class, and I think there can be some classes tailor made for guys who might struggle, mm -hmm. but I think it's, you know, we break that cycle and we tell people that, hey man, take athletic serious, and I mean academic serious, and if you can't, then we'll get you more help and we'll build the curriculum to it. Hopefully we just don't push you through the program. Um, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the pay for play or get paid for your value, yeah, there's a, there's a complete difference between a guy who's a starter, all American, and a guy who's, who wants to be that and who's coming up. I think that we can, we can make it fair 
I think we can't make it fair that everybody gets a stipend for all sports because some of my best friends were wrestlers, Kevin Randleman, yep. who, you know, mm -hmm. you remember Lawrence, Kevin was in school with us this past, mm -hmm. and that guy took me under the wing, took me under his wing, and he showed me a lot on campus. I would hate to see the wrestling program go away or, or women's look women's lacrosse or whatever. And I have some volleyball players I know too, but <laughs> uh -uh. <clears throat> but for the most part, I think it should be spread out. On the, on the money side, I think it can be spread out. And then if, if you're close to making that decision, I know for me, when it came down to making that decision as a junior, I went to, the bank gave me a disability policy and they rated me. And it was like, well, you can be a top five pick, so we can give you a $5 million. So I think that might be a way to do it through as they, as a third party, the, let the insurance companies value what you're worth and how you get money, right? That's what happened for, for most of the guys. I think the kid out of Notre Dame who hurt his knee, the first round pick, he had a $5 million insurance policy. Even though he might not be drafted in the first round, the more he can collect on that, on that insurance policy. So that's my thoughts behind it. I think you should be a full-time student. <laughs> um, I, I think it's important. I think there is something out there called as progress towards your degree. I think where you really need to focus it is that it really is progress towards your degree. Um, so when I went, it was still quarters. It was a 12-hour minimum per quarter. Inherently doable, in my opinion. Inherently yep. doable. I never took less than 17 hours because I was always panicked that if I had to drop a class, I could and I could still be eligible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And when I took 22 hours in a quarter, I got my best grades because there was no dilly-dallying. I couldn't go fiddle-fart around with my friends. I, it, you had to really pay attention. So I think you do need to be a full-time student, but you need to make sure that the classes you're requiring people to take however you want to define progress toward a degree is something that people really do feel like they're learning in and it, it's benefiting them. That makes it a heck of a lot easier to go to class when you actually think that you're learning something out of it instead of sitting there and someone speaking, you know, rushing to you. Full-time student, real progress, yep. real classes that, that maybe we redefine what progress toward a degree is. Yep. Thanks. I I'm came glad. in here what, eight years ago, seven years ago maybe, and I, I'm working for the education department over there doing, I'm teaching their golf twos, and then in the process developed a course um, called Golf for Business and Life. It got developed because the um, PGA program that they have here that hasn't got certified yet, I believe, um, needed the course. So I told them I would take care of it and did it. And basically what we do is we take golfers out. And I have a lot of football players that take this course, basketball players, hockey players, wrestlers, um, seeing a huge influx of women right now. And we take them on the golf course. We teach them how to play golf. But we also teach them how to do business on the golf course. And we bring in people like you guys. Um, business people to talk to them about, number one, how important education is because you can't be an athlete for your entire life. Most people can't anyway. Um, and a lot of kids have gotten jobs that got hurt, um, didn't make it. They come back to Nationwide and, and, you know, I have a good relationship with them and, you know, they've gotten a job. So, you know, it's... It, it's one of those things where this is such a hard, hard, hard thing because you've got like different economic backgrounds, like they said. And um, I think that in time, something great will come, a positive person try to be. Something in time, in time, it'll all hopefully be fixed and be equitable again for football, basketball, women's golf, <laughs> women's tennis, um, women's basketball, all the sports that we offer here because I guess the last thing I would hate to see happen is we lose what this great university offers and it is great. I can tell you walking in anywhere I go and the first question sometimes out of most people's mouth is, where'd you go to school? The Ohio State University. 
that holds more water than anything I can tell you about. That is, that is, mm -hmm. that is so impressive to a lot of people. They didn't know I barely graduated, but you know, that's okay. You know, I have a degree and I think it was called recreation and I took recreation, what was it called back then? Recreation? Leisure sports now. It was called something different before then. But I was in one of those, you know, here Kelly, you're gonna take this, you know, and I wanted to be a phys ed teacher, but not gonna happen with my situation. So, you know, I, I understand where everybody's coming from and, you know, it is, it is a tough, tough, tough call for all of us to figure out where we need to be and there are so many differences. So I'm hoping that maybe if we cut everybody's money off and bring everybody to the table, something great will come. I don't know. <laughs> We, we have, I'm going to ask one last question, and if you guys answer it quickly, I'll have one after that. But I want to applaud the um, impassioned plea for free market economics, whether I come to any conclusion about what that means, but um, for the economists in the audience, that was excellent. 